I know, I know. You guys are probably wondering why I decided to sell my F6, you know, the full frame 6K flagship model Z cam. And uh, that's what I'm here today to talk about with you guys. It's to just explain why I decided to sell it and uh, what camera I decided to go with instead. So if you're interested in why I decided to sell my F6, stick around through the end of this video because I got a lot to talk about. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty beneficial for those of you who are in the market for a Z cam. You know, if you think that the Z cam line of cameras is interesting, then I think this video will help a ton of you guys out. And um, man, I feel like I haven't sat in front of the camera in such a long time. Like I'm literally nervous to talk to the camera right now. I don't know if you guys can tell, but um, I'm kind of shaky. I had a coffee, which was probably a bad idea, but man, it's been a while, but it feels good to be back in front of the camera. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, so first things first, I have to talk to you guys about the Z cam lineup of cameras and their naming system because it can be confusing. And for instance, the camera that I just sold, the Z cam E2 F6, that's kind of like a long name and all of their cameras begin with E2 and end with F6, S6, F8, or M4, or it's just E2 or it's E2C. So there's so many different kind of like naming configurations and they can be kind of confusing. So I'm just gonna break them down for you guys so that way they were all on the same page and I can just talk about the F6, the S6, the F8, the M4, and not have to say the entire name of the camera. So the first camera that Zcam offers is the E2C. This is a micro four thirds camera. I'm honestly not exactly sure of the specs on that camera, but it doesn't really interest me. So that one's just kind of like out the window, E2C whatever. The second camera they offer is the Zcam E2. This is the original micro four thirds camera that shoots 4k up to like 160 frames per second or something. I actually owned the original E2 for a little bit over a year before I decided to sell it and upgrade to the F6. Zcam also just announced the brand new E2-M4 which is the same exact camera as the E2 pretty much except it's in the flagship model body so the same body that the F6 is in. It's just a little bit bigger all the custom buttons are on the left side and um, yeah, it's just a better body, interchangeable mounts, all of that nonsense. So the E2M4 is now a thing. Next after the E2M4 is the E2S6, which is the Super 35 6K camera. After the S6 comes the E2F6, which is the full frame 6K model camera, which is the one that I just owned. And then after the F6 comes the E2F8, which is the full frame 8K model camera, which it's just a little bit absurd. I don't need 8K, but it's a thing and it lives out in the Zcam world. So I hope you guys kind of understand the models now. And then for the sake of this video, I'm just going to refer to the F6 as the F6 and the S6 as the S6. Jesus Christ, man, this freaking window light. Every time I decide to record next to the window and use this as my key light, the clouds just decide to ruin my day. Like, can't they just stay in one spot and just be overcast for the entire time that I'm recording this video? Like, come on, clouds. Do your boy a favor. Help me out. All right, so throughout this video, guys, I'm going to try to be as honest and as open as I can with the reasons for why I decided to sell my F6 because hopefully, you know, this video helps some of you make a better decision as to what camera to buy if you are looking to upgrade or whatever the case is. Anyway. Let's get into the first reason, and that is going to be the price of the camera. Back in February of 2020, when I decided to buy this camera, the price was $4,995 US dollars. Where I live in the US, I have to pay taxes through Adorama and through B&H, so I bought the F6 through Adorama. After taxes, I ended up paying $5,400. So before I bought the F6, it's important for you guys to know that I shot on the original E2. I had the original E2 for a little over a year and I absolutely loved that camera. It, it, it was an amazing little camera, but I was just sick and tired of shooting on the Micro Four Thirds sensor. I've been shooting on the Sony a7 III for the past like two years uh, and I had the a7S II before that. So moving from a full frame sensor down to a Micro Four Thirds sensor was just kind of a bummer. You know what I mean? Like I, I really began to miss that shallow depth of field and the wider field of view on the wider focal lengths. And I really just wanted to get back to a bigger size sensor. So originally I was going to wait for the S6 to drop, but the S6 was so back ordered. It was like months and months and months behind schedule and nobody knew when S6s were going to be in stock. And one night I just happened to be laying in bed, couldn't sleep, happened to just hop onto Adorama to see you know, if they had any deals popping off. And of course, they got a sneaky stock 
of f6s in and um yeah i made i made a not so smart play to just buy the camera because i didn't have the funds to buy the camera so i put it on a credit card and um yeah that just kind of fucked me i'm not gonna lie it fucked me over because right after i bought the camera we got hit with a global pandemic coronavirus covid19 you guys all know we're all living through this moment of history right now and uh over the past couple of months my work has just slowed down so drastically that I really had no money coming in and I owned the F6 for two months. So this leads me into the point of guilt, I guess you can say. I, I just felt guilty that I bought a camera that was so expensive for me personally. For you, $5,000 might not be expensive, but for me, $5,000 is a pretty big purchase. You know, I'm only a 25 year old kid. I still live at home with my parents. I'm trying to make money and save money so whether I can buy my own house or apartment or condo or whatever and get the frig out of my parents house no offense mom and dad I love you guys but you know it's time for me to move out and start doing my own thing and uh, this year 2020 was the first year that I went full-time freelance on my own business so I decided to make this this play you know and, and buy this five thousand dollar camera because I thought it'd be good for my business I could write it off on my taxes at the end of the year and I thought that I was just going to shoot a bunch of jobs in the, in the next month and make a ton of money and pay the camera off. But global pandemic comes, COVID-19, I lose 75% of the work that I had coming in and in the pit of my stomach, I just had $5,400 of debt sitting there and um, yeah, I was just, I, I just felt guilty like I should not have bought this camera. So I owned the F6 for about two months, I'd say, and over the span of those two months, I shot one paid job with the F6 and I decided to say, you know what, I just made, you know, a little bit of money off this job. Let me just sell off this camera and because who, you know, who knows how long this pandemic is going to go on for, who knows when work will start to pick up and get back to normal. And I, I was admitting to the fact that I made a mistake in purchasing this camera when I really shouldn't have and... I decided to sell it to just get some money back in my pocket and just kind of comfort me throughout this really weird global pandemic time that we're going through because it's always good to have a little bit of extra money and not be in debt because you don't, you, you never know what's going to happen in the world, you know, and this is a perfect example that I hope, you know, many of you guys watching this video can learn from my mistakes and not, you know, going into debt and not buying gear if you don't have the funds for it in cash right in front of your face. So I decided to sell the camera get some money back and, you know, just take it one step at a time. So like I said, I'm going to be honest and open with you guys throughout this video. And I ended up selling my F6 right before Zcam decided to drop the prices on pretty much all of their cameras. When I bought the F6, I bought it for $4,995 a couple of weeks ago or about a month ago. I don't know, but really recently Zcam decided to drop the price on the F6 from $5,000 to $4,000. And that, that was a crazy play. And the S6 also dropped from $3,000 to $2,500. So seeing these prices drop, the F8 also dropped in price by $1,000. Seeing these prices drop after I sold the F6, I got lucky because I sold my F6 to somebody who traded me an E2 plus cash. And now here's the deal. I'm going to be, like I said, completely honest with you guys. I sold the F6 for $3,300 plus the guy gave me a pretty good condition Zcam E2, the original E2 model. I took that E2 and I sold off the E2 for $1,750, so $1,750. In total, what I made off of my F6 was $3,300 plus $1,750, which I'm really bad at math. Give me a second. I ended up making $5,050 back on my F6, which is kind of crazy, and I don't know how you know I, I swung that deal, but... I sold the F6, made my money back, and literally like two days later, Zcam dropped all of the prices on their cameras, and I was like, holy shit, I just sold this right in time. And uh, the buyer who bought my F6 hit me up, and he was like, dude, you, you sold this camera to me just in time. He was a really good sport about it, and um, if you're watching this, dude, you know who you are. You're an absolute G, and I appreciate you, you know, not being an asshole and coming at me and being like, dude, give me my money back, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I sold off the F6, got some money back in my pocket, paid off that credit card that I initially bought the F6 with, and I was feeling much better about just 
you know, I, I had no more guilt in the back of my mind. But now that left me with just my a7 III and my a6600. And as much as I love these cameras, right now I'm filming on the a6600. As much as I love these cameras, these sensors just aren't the same as what was in my Z cam. And I really had a hard time going back to shooting on a mirrorless body. I really missed, you know, the, the filmic look, the very soft highlights, the dynamic range of a cinema sensor. So I, I needed to buy another Z cam. And I didn't want to buy any other camera. I didn't want to buy a Blackmagic. I really loved what Z cam was doing with our cameras. And after having the E2 and the F6, I knew that I needed the S6. Like I said, the S6 was the camera that I wanted from day one. You know what I mean? Like after I owned the E2, I wanted the S6. I didn't pre-order it, so I missed out on that opportunity to get my hands on it earlier, which then caused me to buy the F6 and go into debt. So I was like, let me just buy this freaking camera that I've been wanting. And luckily enough, about a week after I sold the F6, Adorama got a stock of S6s in for the new price of $2,500. And I had $2,500 cash, you know, on me to buy the camera with. I wasn't going into debt with this one and I decided to buy the S6. So you guys are probably like, Mako, why didn't you just save another 1500 bucks, wait a little longer and buy another F6 for the new price of $4,000. And that is because I wanted the S6 for a couple of reasons, which I'm gonna obviously talk to you guys about right now, which brings me to reason number one for buying the S6, the price to value ratio. For $2,500, the amount of camera that you're getting in the S6 is just absolutely insane. I'm not going to go into too much detail because this is already a long video. I've been recording for 40 minutes because I freaking stink at making YouTube videos and I sit here and ramble for so long. But the S6 just has so many features that the F6 has just with a slightly smaller sensor. And I really think that the S6 is just kind of like a no-brainer purchase. You know, if you're in the market for a camera between two to $3,000, the S6 is just it's literally so much freaking camera for so little money $2,500 for this camera is like pennies for what you get out of it so reason number two as to why i downgraded to the s6 was for the sensor size okay super 35 size sensor is honestly a really great size sensor like it's been industry standard for the past however many freaking years i'm sure whatever movies that we grew up watching have been shot on super 35 you know some of the newer movies have been shot on like large format full frame cameras but for the most part super 35 has been like the industry standard and it's got plenty of depth of field it's got great lens options and you know, I really have no complaints with the Super 35 sensor. For me, I'm a one-man band kind of guy. I don't really have a huge crew coming with me shooting on set and, you know, helping me out when I'm shooting for a client. So this may sound kind of stupid to some of you, but having a smaller sensor with a little bit less shallow depth of field actually helps me keep my subjects in focus when I'm out shooting by myself. But at the same time, I also have the option to use a lens like the Sigma 18 to 35 and stop it down to 1.8 and you know, blow the background out and get a really shallow depth of field too. So I just think the super 35 size sensor, is just a good in between size for me as a filmmaker. And you know, that that's really what this video comes down to is what I needed for me as a filmmaker and, and what was going to fit my style of shooting. Reason number three being lens options. Okay. I love having a bunch of different lenses for many of you that know me. I shoot a ton of vintage glass and I have a full lineup of Canon FD lenses that I just converted to EF mount. But it's not only for the vintage lenses that I switched to the S6 for, it's also for the Sigma 18 to 35. And I've owned this lens like five or six times in the past. I'm not gonna lie, I've bought it and sold it like literally five times. And every time I sell it, I'm like, man, that lens is so great. It's 18 millimeters all the way to 35 millimeters on a super 35 size sensor 18 to 35 is roughly like 27 millimeters to 50 millimeters which is a great range and it's all internal zoom internal focusing and it stops down to 1.8 that is absurd and at 1.8 the lens is so freaking sharp i'm sure you all know how great the sigma 18 to 35 is and it's just an absolutely amazing lens. I love that lens so freaking much. Like I said before, me as a filmmaker and my needs, I'm always shooting between like 24 millimeters to 50 millimeters. I'm never really shooting at a longer focal length than 50 millimeters. So the 18 and 35 is just like the perfect lens for me. It's, it's amazing. I've also been really getting into shooting anamorphic lately. Anamorphic is just so freaking beautiful. There's just something about it. The, the compression, the distortion, the flares, 
I, I just love shooting anamorphic and I'm currently shooting on a projector lens. I did own the Vazen 40 millimeter before for my E2 and that lens man was just so freaking beautiful. Like it was a 1.8 times squeeze, crazy blue flares, tack sharp wide open. Like that lens was seriously like a game changer for me. That's what really made me get into shooting anamorphic. I sold the Vazen when I sold my original E2, which was another huge mistake on my part. It opened up the doors to me loving anamorphic and there are just so many anamorphic lens options out there that work on a super 35 size sensor i think super 35 size sensor is like the best sensor size for shooting anamorphic there's just so many options like i said uh the atlas anamorphic lenses cover super 35 size sensor there's some slr magic lenses that are a 1.33 times squeeze that cover super 35 size sensor there's a bunch of old vintage projector lenses that you can build out together with a taking lens and a front diopter which i'm currently doing now uh, that covers super 35 size sensor. So there's just, like I said, so many options for shooting anamorphic. And if I kept the F6, I would have had to buy, you know, like a full frame anamorphic lens. And yeah, that wasn't happening because full frame anamorphics are like a lot of fucking money. And I don't have that, you know, I just, I don't have all that money to buy a full frame anamorphic lens. So shooting on a super 35 size sensor just gives me more options to save my pennies down the line and possibly buy something like the Atlas anamorphic lenses, for example. So the third reason why I decided to downgrade from the F6 to the S6 was for the swappable mounts. If you don't know this, Zcam offers different mount options that you can literally change the type of mount that you have on the front of the camera. So the S6 that I bought came in EF mount, but I can buy a PL mount and just swap that mount out if I ever decide to buy PL mount lenses down the line. And I can also buy a micro four thirds mount from Zcam and use micro four thirds lenses on a super 35 size sensor. And you're probably like, dude, why the hell would you use micro four thirds lenses on a super 35 sensor? Well, some micro four thirds lenses do cover super 35 size sensor like the mikey cine prime lenses those cover super 35 size sensors which is absolutely crazy because those lenses are so small and they're really affordable and they're really sharp and they're really good from what i've heard so if i ever decide to buy you know cinema lenses i now have that option to swap out the mount and buy micro four third size lenses to use on a super 35 size sensor and just save a little bit of money, cut costs there. And these mounts are only like a hundred bucks from Zcam. So to pay an extra hundred bucks per mount to be able to just swap them out, if I ever decide to do that, that was just another reason that was interesting to me to have as a filmmaker. I see myself owning the S6 for many, many years to come. So uh, just having a camera that's kind of like future proof like that, it's just, it, it also is kind of crazy that the camera's only $2,500, like I said before. It's like a no freaking brainer, man. It's a no brainer. This camera's insane. But also, another lens brand that covers super 35 size sensor is the Vazen anamorphic lenses. And I had the Vazen 40 millimeters. I know firsthand that that lens is amazing. So if I just buy a micro four thirds mount for my S6 and then save my pennies a little bit more to get my hands on another Vazen 40 millimeter. I can shoot anamorphic on the S6 with a really, really good lens that doesn't break the bank. Like the Vazen lenses are $3,200 and the only other option is like an Atlas anamorphic lens, which I believe those are like eight to $9,000 per lens. So that is a huge price difference and I can totally see myself buying another Vazen down the line to shoot anamorphic on my S6. So those are like the main reasons why I decided to kind of downgrade to the S6. I hope you guys can kind of see this from my point of view and understand where I'm coming from as a filmmaker. You know, with the extra money savings, I guess you could say, from selling the F6, I decided to put that extra money into other gear that I definitely needed as a filmmaker. Like, I bought a pretty good lighting setup now. Uh, I bought a new microphone. I bought a C-stand. I just, I, I bought some grip gear that I needed to bring on productions with me that can kind of live with me throughout my filmmaking journey. Uh, I also built out a client monitor, which I'll show you guys right now. So I have a couple jobs coming up where I'm going to need a wireless focus puller and a client monitor setup. So I built out this rig right here, which you guys can see. I'll hold it up in front of my face so the autofocus gets it. But this is the small HD Focus 7 uh, built out with the Hollyland Mars 400S system, all powered off of a V-mount battery. If you guys want to see a rig breakdown of this wireless monitor setup then drop a comment down below and i will be sure to make a video on this in the near future so if you're interested 
make sure to subscribe to see that. But yeah, I decided to put that extra money from selling the F6 into some other gear that I needed, which I think was a smarter play for me to make uh, because now this like a, a wireless client monitor adds production value and now I can charge my clients more money because I have that option to give to them on set. You know what I mean? So it's just little things like that that uh, I thought were a better play for me as a filmmaker and for me being more of like a run and gun, one man band kind of guy. Uh, these were the things that I needed instead of just splurging, you know, all of the budget that I didn't even have on a camera, you know, and, and not having the proper gear to assist that camera to get the shots to even look good because the, the camera that you have isn't going to make the shots look good. You need to have the, the certain lighting, the certain audio equipment to, to kind of make all of the pieces of the puzzle come together. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what camera you have as long as you know how to make it look good. So to wrap up the video, I don't know if you guys noticed, but right here is my S6. Uh, hold it right up here to the lens so you guys can kind of see the rig and what it's looking like. But some of the things I decided to buy also with the extra money was this tilt a map box. Uh, and I also bought the Atomos Ninja 5 or the Ninja V uh, because ProRes Raw is coming to Zcam and I'm kind of pumped. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope this helped clear the air and, you know, I hope that some of you guys could take away some important tips that... Uh, you don't make the same mistakes that I made in your filmmaking journey, you know, with buying gear that you really don't need at the time and putting yourself into debt like me, a freaking idiot. But I know some of you guys did notice that in my last film, Super Lonely, that I posted. I think I posted like two weeks ago or something, and I also posted a BTS. So if you guys haven't seen those two videos, go check them out. I'll leave a link or a card up here somewhere. But some of you guys noticed that I was shooting on the S6, and um, yeah, you got, you guys got first access to seeing that I didn't have the F6. So kudos to you guys that caught on to me shooting on the S6 instead of the F6. Um, if you guys want to see a rig breakdown of my S6, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I will be posting the rig breakdown in the next one to two weeks. Okay. I'm just waiting on a couple more parts to come in to really get this rig how I wanted. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a rig breakdown, so it's coming. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell to get the notifications. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, drop a like, hit that thumbs up button. Also, I noticed that a lot of you guys that watch my videos aren't even subscribed to the channel. What the frick is that about? Just hit the subscribe button, okay? Hit the subscribe button, do me a favor. And that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I've been talking literally for an hour. Uh, I'm gonna try to chop this video down so it's not too long for you guys to watch. If you made it this far, you're an absolute G. I'm gonna stop talking, I'm out. Peace out, catch you guys later. Holy shit.